On day one, I spawned into the nether as a baby demon cobra. I was sitting on a throne where all the demon cobra people had gathered to watch my coronation. Suddenly, a portal opened at the end of the chamber and a massive angelic godly serpent emerged. Your demonic reign ends here. An army of angelic soldiers appeared in the portal, and the godly serpent and his men began to slay the civilians in the crowd left and right. The serpent had the ability to fly and shower deadly projectiles of light down onto me and my people. His powerful projectiles in combination with his men were devastating and made my people drop like flies. Within the chaos, only one thought came to my mind. I need to find my dad! I searched through the fight for my father only to find the godly serpent already looming over him. He shot down a flowing projectile into my dad and killed him in a single strike. Dad! No! The godly serpent spotted me and he casted a mysterious spell of light that caused a strange item to appear in my inventory. You now possess the hunter's mark. No matter where you run, I will always find you. The godly serpent sent his army at me and I had no choice but to run away. On day two, I was being pursued by the godly serpent's men. I tried to find a place to hide, but around every corner, one of the warriors was already waiting for me. Because of the hunter's mark, they knew my every move. I gotta get rid of this thing. I tried to throw the mark away, but it reappeared in my inventory. I was forced to keep running with it for now. I did my best to avoid their attacks of light, but one managed to hit me, leaving me with low health. Another hit like that and I'm finished. I continued to run when I was cornered by a pool of lava. I was a demon, but I wasn't sure if lava would hurt me. I have to take a leap of faith. I dove into the lava, and to my surprise, I had fire resistance. I couldn't relax though. The army of angels continued to shoot their powerful abilities into the lava below. I swam beneath the molten liquid and tried to evade each strike from the soldiers, but I could only hold my breath for so long. I swam away until I narrowly escaped into a cavern. <sighs> Are they still following me? Just then, I heard heavy footsteps approaching me from behind. I turned around and realized the godly serpent's pet was looming over me, hungry for a cobra meal. <laughs> On day three, I was being attacked by Godrius, the godly serpent's companion. The horrific beast was armed with an ax forged by the gods. He threw it at me, dealing extreme amounts of damage each time it hit me. I tried to dodge and weave his attacks, but the ax alone was twice my size. Not only was his weapon powerful, but his body body was imbued with godly power. He ran at me with great speed and struck me with his boulder-like claws. Every one of his attacks felt like they kept getting more powerful and he seemed untouchable. That's it! Now I'm mad! As a demon cobra, I realized I had the ability to shoot shadowy slashes through the air. My demonic energy cut through space and sliced at my foe, giving me an upper hand. I also had the power to summon demonic chains that rose from the floor and dragged my enemy to the ground. I used these powers to the best of my ability, but I was still just a baby demon cobra. Godrius's armor of light shielded him from my demonic powers and I was running out of energy to continue the fight. Despite my efforts, the beast was too powerful. I didn't stand a chance. I gotta run. I rushed deeper into the cavern, and just as I thought I was met with another dead end, I spotted a small passageway in the wall. I used my small size to slither through and narrowly escape the monster's attack. When I arrived on the other side, I found myself at an altar that housed a mysterious gem. What's that? Stop right there. That gem will destroy you. Out of nowhere, an old skeleton wizard walked in front of me. What do you mean? There are six mythic gems that hold tremendous power, but each one is cursed. It is my job to protect travelers. Did you say power? I want it! I quickly unleashed my demonic power onto the pathetic wizard. He didn't stand a chance and fell to my strength. Fall to the might of the demon cobra! With the wizard out of my way, I approached the altar and claimed my prize. However, just as he had warned, the curse took effect and began to drain my health away. I clung onto the gem. I needed this power to survive. I didn't think I was gonna make it, but I managed to live with half a heart. If each gem is like this, I have to be careful. Suddenly, I felt a huge surge of power shoot through my body. My fangs glistened with a new venom, and my demon powers felt stronger. I grew three times in size and was now an adult demon cobra with 10 hearts. <laughs> I feel incredible! Just then, the room trembled and one of the walls collapsed before me. The godly serpent's men had found me. On days four through seven, I clashed with the godly serpent's men. Little did they know, I had new tricks up my sleeve. Thanks to the power of the first gem, I was now able to use my venomous fangs to inflict poison damage and weaken my foes. My demonic powers were stronger and cut through the angel's armor like it was nothing. 
Although my attacks landed a heavy hit on the warriors, my larger body made me an easier target. I couldn't let my guard down, otherwise I would have been cooked by their angelic powers of light. It was a struggle, but I managed to overcome the swarm. If one gem makes me this strong, I wonder what the other five will be like. I didn't get a chance to breathe as a new powerful warrior lunged towards me. Your life ends here, demon. The warrior was able to lunge and slash me with his sharp swords. I tried to retaliate with my demonic powers, and I was able to knock him back, but he still charged at me. It was no use. Even with the might of the first gem, I was too weak. I dove back into the lava pool and swam for my life. Run all you want. Thanks to the hunter's mark, I'll always find you. I was beginning to lose hope of escaping when I found a room with another portal. I didn't know what was on the other side, but I didn't have time to think. I jumped through and braced myself. When I arrived on the other side, I found myself inside of a skeletal cave surrounded by a horde of skeletons. Who are you? Leave at once. I am the Demon Cobra, and you will obey me. One of the skeletons tried to hit me with an arrow, but I easily dodged it and retaliated with my demonic power. <laughs> I see now you hold great strength. Please, allow us to serve you. Suddenly, the Archangel emerged from the nether portal, ready to end me. I found you! On days 8 through 10, I braced myself for death, when suddenly the skeleton leader shouted out, Defend our new king! Arrows flew down onto the Warrior of Light. He may have had the upper hand on me alone, but thanks to my new army of skeletons, he was overwhelmed. Mark my words, I will find you again. You cannot escape the mark. The angel retreated, leaving me alone with my army. It's not safe here. We need to build a base. I left the area to find a secret location for my new home. A cave in the Badlands was sure to be a safe place to call home for a while. I started by digging out the cave to make plenty of room for my new burrow. I planned on going big to match the castle I was born in. At the bottom of the cavern, I built the center building for what would soon be my new demonic fortress, complete with a lava moat. It looks great now, but it's far from done. Next, I added an area for the skeleton army to rest in. I made sure it was constructed of bones so they would feel at home. Once my base had a nice start, one of the skeletons called out to us. There's something flying overhead! Did they find me? We all took cover as the godly serpent flew by. Thanks to the cover of our new base, he didn't notice me. They're hunting me in the overworld too. I can never let my guard down. Just then, I spotted a mysterious map on the ground. Angel Base. The godly serpent must have dropped this. I better see if there are any clues there. On days 11 through 14, I arrived at the angelic base to find that it was flying high in the sky. If only I had wings. I'm sure that place has all kinds of valuable intel. Just then, I spotted one of the godly serpent's men flying down to the ground. He didn't seem to notice me and started to walk the other way. Now's my chance. I followed behind him, but suddenly the ground caved in beneath me. He led me right into a trap. Everything went black. When I woke up, I was inside of a prison cell next to a small moss creature. Oh good, you're awake. My name is Gero. Not that it matters. The Archangel is already on his way. Like clockwork, I spotted something out of the corner of my eye. The Archangel was flying down the hall towards our cell. We have to act quick. I scanned the room and saw that a guard was blocking our only exit. Can demons possess people? It's worth a shot. I focused on the guard as hard as I could and managed to take control of his body. Ugh. Can't hold this for long! I opened the prison cell, but the possession was too much for me to control. I returned to my body just as the Archangel arrived. Run! On days 15 through 17, Garo and I were in the middle of a jailbreak with the Archangel close behind us. He was too powerful for us to take on in a fight, but we couldn't run much longer. This way! I know someone who can help! I followed Garo and he led us into a lush cave with a tribe full of mobs just like him. As the Archangel entered the tribal grounds, their defenses kicked into action. Charge! An army of mossy crabs commanded by the tribe leader ran into the fray. The light warrior and the people of the tribe battled it out. The horde of mossy crabs dug into the warrior with their claws. All the while, the tribe leader commanded them from the sidelines and dealt massive damage to the Archangel every chance he had. Despite the protection of their stone shells, the light warrior slashed with their defenses bit by bit. He was so powerful that it was still anyone's game. I watched nervously as the two sides fought. But after a lot of back and forth, the tribe managed to fend off the warrior for now. The archangel flew away, vowing that he would return stronger than before. After the fight, the massive tribe leader approached me. I sense the power of the cursed gem. 
Who are you? I'm Max. What do you know about the gems? Our tribe possesses one, but the curse it holds has already taken a number of lives. Turn back while you still can. I'm not leaving without it. You should have listened to my warnings. The tribe leader landed a heavy hit on me, knocking me out cold. On days 18 through 21, I woke up on a platform hanging over a pit of water. All around me was an audience of mossy mobs with the tribe leader on a throne. What's going on? Whoa, I better watch my step. Purified water is fatal for demons. Welcome to the cursed trial. Only those who complete the challenge may attempt to claim the cursed gem. A challenge? Bring it on! Defeat the Talok, and you'll win. Suddenly, a massive mecha-like beast fell onto the platform in front of me. The monster charged me and sent me flying backwards. I managed to barely stop myself at the edge and nearly fell off the platform. I have to be careful. I gathered my courage and engaged the monster in combat. My opponent was twice my size, but I wasn't going down without a fight. I used my demonic powers to spawn chains to pin him down, but with his massive size, he was able to break free from them easily. He started to smack the ground and summoned two of his green goons to take me out. I wasn't going to let that happen. I slithered around the platform to make me a harder target to hit. Despite his goons making this battle more challenging, I was able to take them out quickly. The battle left me with low health, but I slayed the beast once and for all. The cursed gem and its pedestal appeared before me as the crowd went wild. Now you must withstand the curse of the gem. If you are worthy, you will be allowed to claim it. Oh no! I may not have enough health left to withstand the curse. On days 22 through 25, I was forced to grab the cursed gem with low health. Just like before, my health bar began to deplete. But this time, it looked like it would be fatal. I'm not gonna make it! No! Max! Suddenly, Garo emerged from the audience and threw a splash potion of healing at me. The potion took effect immediately and I was able to claim the gem. Its power overtook my body, causing me to sprout wings and grow bigger than before. I now had 20 hearts and the ability to fly. Who interfered with the ritual? They shall be executed. I couldn't let the tribe's soldiers hurt Garo. I'm coming for you! I took to the sky and scooped him away from the angry mob. Don't let them escape! On days 26 through 28, I was being chased by the angry tribesmen. I was too weak from the battle to fight them off, but I had another trick up my sleeve. I flew Garo and I back to the base where my skeleton army stood waiting. Get them, men! The skeletons readied their weapons and shot down the enemies one by one. The battle was fierce, and even my army's numbers were beginning to thin. Luckily, they managed to overcome the threat and the tribe retreated. Great job! Thank you, sir. But the base has taken heavy damage. The godly serpent could strike at any moment, so we must reinforce quickly. I listened to my army and began to add reinforcements to my base. I started to pave the stone walls of my burrow to look a lot more like the nether. My demon castle was starting to feel much more like home. Next, I built some beams to support my cave roof. I wasn't going to let an attack on my base leave me and my army caved in. Lastly, I added a gate and a guard post to my base so that my army could better keep watch of the place while I was gone. Once I had strengthened my defense, I built the pen to hold cows and sheep for a consistent source of meat. Finally, I built a new room for Garo to call his own, complete with azalea bushes, glowberry vines, and all of the moss he could want. Thanks for all your help. I'm happy we shared the same prison cell. Garo's words reminded me of the angelic base I was seeking, and now I had just the tool I needed to get inside. Time to put these wings to use. On days 29 through 32, I flew up towards the angelic base to find that it was crawling with soldiers. I can't fly straight in. My mark will give me away. I have to make a diversion. I returned to the ground and got to work on creating a summoning circle. I planned to summon another demon to help distract the enemies. Once everything was set up, I chanted some mystic words. In a fiery inferno, a massive demon summoned before me. Welcome to the overworld. I need you to distract those angels. Why should I do that? I see you have two of the cursed gems. Give them to me. My plan backfired, and my new demon ally turned on me. He charged me, ready for battle. The demon started by overwhelming me with his huge body. I bit him with my venomous fangs, but it didn't seem to affect the demon at all. I summoned my dark change from the ground and tried to send him back to the underworld, but his strength was too powerful to slow him down. I was getting overwhelmed by his unbelievable defenses, but things were about to get worse. Out of nowhere, the demon summoned green meteors from the sky that tore into me for massive damage. Along with the rocks, massive demonic golems joined the fray. One demon was enough of a problem. 
But now I was against an army. I fought them off to the best of my abilities, using my wings to evade attacks from the sky above. The battle was tense, but I suddenly spotted the godly serpent and his men coming straight towards us. Uh-oh. I gotta get out of here. I fled before the troops could catch me and left them to deal with the demon. That won't hold them for long. I better make this quick. On days 33 through 35, I flew into the angelic base in search for clues. I tried to make the visit short, since an angel guard could sense my mark at any moment. I searched through the courtyard until I found a note sitting on the ground. The demon cobra is after the cursed gem. Secure the gem located within the tundra before he can get it. Looks like I know where to look next. Just then, I heard someone approaching me and I quickly took cover. To my dismay, the archangel from a few days prior entered the area. I know you're around here somewhere, demon. I can sense your mark. This guy was bad news, so I tried my best to stay as quiet as I could. Unfortunately, my allergy to the purified water caused me to sneeze. There you are! My cover was blown, so I took to the skies and the warrior flew after. The warrior attacked me with his incredible powers. He was a skilled flyer and was able to charge at me with lightning speed. I had only just gotten my wings, so it was almost impossible to keep up. Even so, I held on and retaliated with my demonic powers. I tried to chain him down and deal some good hits with my demonic slashes. The archangel's armor held strong as he took everything that he dealt at me. Thanks to the power of the second gem, I was able to take more hits than before, but the warrior of light was still the toughest opponent opponent I've faced so far. I'm the Godly Serpent, second in command. You don't stand a chance. I kept up the struggle, but a slice from the warrior's sword clipped my wing, causing me to fall from the sky. No creature can survive a fall like that. I better report back to the Godly Serpent. The Archangel flew away, expecting me not to make it from the fall. On days 36 through 39, I was falling towards the ground. I smashed into the surface, causing me to black out. I was inside of a strange dream world where my dad stood before me. Dad? Is that you? You are doing well, my son. Once you retrieve all six gems, you will surpass even my power. That is why you must have this. My dad handed me a mysterious egg. What is this? Take good care of it and raise it just as I raised you. Good luck, Max. I woke up on the ground with only half a heart of health remaining, and in front of me was the very same egg from my vision. Whoa. I was about to claim my father's gift when out of nowhere, a giant red bird snatched it and ran away. Hey, that's mine. On days 40 through 43, I chased after the egg thief. I was about to catch up when suddenly I turned a corner and was faced with an entire flock of red birds. There's so many. Which one of you stole my egg? I stormed my way through the crowd asking for help, but nobody would respond. Listen to me. I used my demonic power to get their attention and used a brand new attack. I summoned lightning from above, but unfortunately, it seemed to only anger them. The flock swarmed me like angry bees. I had no choice now but to fight them off. They had sharp beaks that pecked through my scales with each hit they made and dealt massive damage. Not only were they strong, but they outnumbered me greatly. I realized I had gotten myself into a tough situation. I began to use my demonic slashing abilities to put the oversized birds in their place. I was able to bite into them with my venomous fangs to thin out the crowd as well as strike them with my new lightning attacks. My new power did just the trick and chained onto the horde one by one. They were strong, but gradually I started to get the edge. Their numbers nearly overwhelmed me, but I managed to overcome them until only the lone egg thief remained. They dropped the egg and scurried off, finally leaving me with my prize. I went to pick it up, but it began to shake in place. It was hatching. Out from the shell emerged a tiny little demon companion. Oh wow, this is what my dad left for me? Hey little guy, are you all right? Instead of responding, the demon scurried off. I can't let the godly serpents find him. I have to catch him. On days 44 through 46, I chased my demon friend until we arrived inside of a snowy biome. Hey, this is where the next gem is. You here to help me find them all? The little demon nodded his head yes. Great. Do you have a name? He then shook his head no. Then I'll name you Demo. Demo! Right on. Let's go, Demo. Demo and I headed into the biome in search of the third cursed gem. I had to keep my guard up. My hunter's mark could give me away at any moment. Suddenly, a yeti ambushed us. The bounty from the godly serpent is going to be sweet. I readied myself for battle, but Demo flew in first to fight off the beast. Despite his size, he was putting up a good fight. Flying around the Yeti like a housefly, it was equally hard to hit. Hey, you're pretty strong, Demo. Keep going. 
The tides of the battle continued to turn, and unfortunately, Dima wasn't able to keep up. He collapsed to the ground in exhaustion. Oh no! Demo, I'm coming! I jumped into the fray and finished off the horrific bounty hunter. Once he was down, I gave Demo some food and he went back to his old self. The godly serpent is sending bounty hunters on us now. We'll have to level you up if you want to take on bigger enemies. Demo! Just then, I spotted a map that was titled Cursed Arena. This sounds like the place we need to go. Let's keep moving. On days 47 through 50, Demo and I arrived in a mysterious arena. Its size towered over me and gave me a deep sense of dread. I have a feeling that this isn't going to be easy. Demo and I entered the arena and spotted the cursed gem at the other end of the building. It was already surrounded by a group of monsters, but I decided to make the most out of a bad situation. All right, Demo, now's our chance for some training. The two of us charged forward and began to fight it out with the horde of enemies. Demo may have been small, but he was mighty. He was able to strengthen my attacks and offer powerful counter hits of his own. Together, we were able to defeat the crowd. Let's grab that gem before more people show up. I prepared myself and ate some food to restore my health. I wasn't sure what this curse was going to do, but I was going to need all 20 of my hearts. I grabbed the gem, but to my surprise, my health didn't drain. Instead, I was petrified in place. Ugh, I can't move! To my horror, the archangel emerged before me. You fell for it! That should keep you still for a minute. That's more than enough time to kill you. Now die! On days 51 through 54, the Archangel charged towards me with the intent to kill. I was completely petrified, and I braced myself for defeat. Just then, Demo intercepted the attack. Demo! You really think your chubby pet can do anything to me? Die! The two of them clashed in an epic battle. Demo fought with all of his might, but he simply didn't stand a chance against the mighty warrior of light. I watched in horror as the angel slashed into my companion with spear and sword at blinding speed. One more hit and Demo would be no more. Suddenly, Demo began to glow brightly and underwent a transformation. He no longer was his little round self. He was taller, pinker, and meaner. He had evolved into a stronger, more powerful form. In Demo's new form, he was able to shoot a nasty flamethrower. It was insanely strong compared to his old fireball, but the Archangel was able to deflect a lot of it with its armor. He was able to withstand more of the warrior's power, but was unfortunately still losing the fight. I struggled and struggled until finally I overcame the curse. I was able to regain control of my body and began to power up. I gained five more hearts and unlocked even more of my demon powers. I'm coming, Demo! I jumped into the fray and fought off the Archangel with my companion by my side. I started launching my new power at the Archangel. It spawned a lot of magic chains and circles that dealt damage and impeded movement. The Archangel was crafty though, and darted around with its teleportation powers, throwing swords at us when it was far and piercing us with its spear when it was close. Demo continued to throw flames at it. I knew we were whittling it down, but it was so difficult. My health was critically low, but Demo and I had gone through so much to get here. I couldn't let my dad's life end in vain. I had to win this battle. I mustered all of my strength and landed a powerful blow that brought the Archangel to his knees. <coughs> you may have defeated me here, Cobra, but the godly serpent will find you. You can never escape the hunter's mark. Yeah. The warrior of light succumbed to his wounds, leaving nothing but a diamond chest plate and a diamond helmet behind. I claimed it for myself and put it on for extra protection. Reinforcements will be here at any second. Let's keep moving, Demo. On days 55 through 57, I arrived back at the base with Demo. I noticed that he wasn't acting himself. He seemed more worn out from the last fight. Suddenly, Demo shrank back down into his smaller form. What happened? Are you okay, buddy? Demo. I see. So it takes a lot of you to hold your stronger form. Then we better save it for emergencies. I decided to give Demo a chance to rest and expand the base some more. With the death of the Archangel on our shoulders, I was painfully aware that the godly serpent would be looking for me even more than he is now. I started by working on the entrance of my base. I wanted anyone who dared to enter know that the Demon Cobra lied inside. I added a Demon Cobra head to the outside, making things much cooler. Afterwards, I built Demo his own room. I made sure it was full of red, demonic blocks, and comfy furniture he could rest on. The little guy seemed to really like what I did with the place. Suddenly, Garo ran up in a frenzy. My tribe is under attack by the angels. Why should I help them? They attacked us. My parents are there too. Garo's pleas struck deep in my heart. I knew the pain of losing a parent, so I agreed to help. I set off towards the tribe, ready to endure whatever was happening on the war grounds. On days 58 through 61, I followed Garo to his tribe to find it under siege by the godly serpent's army. Garo's kind fell left and right to the power of the angelic monsters. 
they were mighty warriors, but unlike previous attacks, it seemed like the godly serpent's forces were stronger than ever before. Their spirits had been crushed and they were no longer fighting back. My parents are over there! Please do something! I couldn't bear to watch this any longer, so I jumped into the fray. The warriors had powerful swords imbued with light magic. Luckily, I had the armor of the Archangel to defend myself now. Their attacks were less effective than before, but their numbers were still so great that it was hard to keep up. I slashed into them with my demonic powers and tried to chain them down, but they continued fighting through my attacks. I unleashed a flurry of lightning to try and thin the crowd, but for every knight I managed to take out, two more would arrive. I was powerful, but there were too many of them to fight alone. I only had a few hearts remaining when I saw Garo's mom being attacked. Help! I'm coming! I swallowed down my fears and quickly fought off the knight, leaving me with only half a heart. Everyone! The Cobra nearly died to save us! We have to help him! Garo is right! Onward, my men! My heroic feats inspired the tribe and they all began to retaliate against the angelic army. Thanks to their help, together we managed to defeat the angels! Thank you for your help, Demon Cobra. Please forgive my anger from before. We are in your debt. I know how you can repay it. I asked the tribe leader to join my army in the fight against the godly serpent. He agreed and gave me one more token of their appreciation. This map will take you to the fourth cursed gem. Good luck. I followed my new lead, unaware of the horrors that would lie close ahead. On days 60 through 64, I followed the map to the edge of the forest. I felt a sense of unease and spotted a camp of angelic cyborgs just at the entrance. This is my chance to get some juicy intel. Taking mine to my size, I found a place to hide and listen in on what they were talking about. The gem is somewhere in these woods. Good thing we have a map. A map? I need that! I jumped out from my hiding spot and unleashed my demonic powers onto the angels. Little did I know that they were one step ahead. They casted a spill of light which caused the cage to appear around me. It was a trap! Ha! There is no map, fool! We can sense your mark from a mile away. The cyborg closed in, but out of nowhere, Demo attacked. He was once again in his more powerful form and unleashed his flamethrower attack onto the drones. They shot at him with anti-demon projectiles, but Demo held strong, burning them and everything around him with his hot flames. They outnumbered him and I desperately wanted to help, but the confines of the cage were too strong for me to break alone. I watched as my companion shot through the army, but it seemed like he was beginning to get the upper hand. His flames were so hot, they melted through the angel's armor. After a long battle, my friend managed to take out the campers and free me from my prison. Thanks, buddy! Just then, we spotted a strange spirit at the tree line. Our eyes met and it scurried off in a hurry. Come on, Demo! Let's catch that thing! On days 65 through 68, Demo and I chased the spirit through the forest. It was unlike any forest I had traversed. Around every corner, it seemed a new danger would await me. I nearly slithered into a patch of thorn bushes. Luckily, I had my wings to fly over them. Just as I evaded those, a swarm of bees started to attack me with their powerful stingers. Normally, I would blast them away in a second, but I couldn't slow down at the risk of losing the spirit. Just as I thought I was safe, a bear came out of nowhere and lunged at me. I took to the skies, barely evading their powerful claws. What kind of forest is this? It's the cursed forest. Ah, that makes sense. Just then, the ground began to tremble. I looked up and was face to face with a giant monster eye. I don't think I can run from this one. The monster eye lunged at me with a crushing, biting attack. Those jaws were no joke. Thankfully, I managed to dart away and use my own abilities to hit right back. My lightning and chain abilities kept eating away at its health, and I knew that very soon, I would have this fight in the bag. With one final swing, I managed to take out the powerful creature. Upon its death, it exploded and dropped a horde of treasures, including a shiny new fire blade. This is great and all, but I think I lost the spirit. Demo! I turned towards the direction Demo was pointing and saw the spirit once again. We can't let it get away! Hurry! On days 69 through 72, the spirit led us to a giant mansion at the heart of the forest. Something deep in me felt unsettled, like we weren't welcome here, but I had come too far to give up now. The cursed gem has to be here, let's keep moving. I walked to the entrance of the mansion and began to explore the different rooms it held. All of them were neglected and covered in spider webs. It seemed to be abandoned. Eventually, we entered a ballroom where the next cursed gem was waiting on a pedestal. I quickly rushed to pick it up when a ghost came out of nowhere. Leave this place or you will be cursed. 
Nah, I'm good. I grabbed the gem and braced myself for the curse, but to my surprise, nothing seemed to happen. Is that it? Suddenly, I realized I was now floating in the air and my body was transparent. The cursed gem had turned me blue and I felt weak. Uh-oh. Is this a prank? <laughs> On day 73 through 75, I was trying to figure out how to remove the curse. Change me back! We warned you about the curse. Now it's time you paid. I stood off against the ghosts, ready to fight for my old body back when out of nowhere, the angelic knights bursted into the ballroom. Exercise this place. It is an affront to the angels. Everyone, run. I was tired of running. I prepared to use my demonic powers only to realize nothing was happening. My new ghostly form prevented me from using my old abilities. The angelic warriors charged me and I fled for my life completely defeated. Defenseless. I managed to find a hiding spot with the other ghosts. Change me back right now and I'll get rid of these guys. Fine, drink this. The ghost tossed over a potion, which I drank down in a quick gulp. I felt a brand new power overcome me. Now that the curse was broken, I transformed, sprouting two arms and growing even larger. I now had five more hearts and the ability to use a fire blast. There they are! The demon cobra is with them! I braced myself and prepared to fight off the angels. Running back out from my spot behind the pillars, I started off by blasting the angels with my new fire powers. They were no match for me. Even with all the scale piercing projectiles they shot at me, the boss ghost and his minions joined me, and together we began to pick them off one by one. Their attacks of light were strong, but my new powers were too much for the feathered freaks to handle. I managed to defeat them thanks to the help of the ghosts. You guys are pretty strong. Would you like to join my army? Eh, why not? Those angels are a real thorn in our side. On days 76 through 79, I returned to the base and decided it was time to do an expansion. I started by expanding my castle to the mountain above my home. I was now a force to be reckoned with, so I didn't mind making my base a bit flashier on the outside with pillars of blackstone and obsidian. I wanted my base to strike fear in anyone who saw it. This is becoming a castle fit for a demon cobra king. Once I was done with that, I worked on a haunted room for the ghosts to call their own. I made sure it had plenty of similar blocks to the haunted mansion and a small graveyard that they could fly around as they please. With that, my expansion was complete. The skeletons, tribe members, and ghosts, my army has really grown. Suddenly, I heard thunder outside of my base. I went to check it out and to my dismay, spotted the godly serpent flying overhead. At long last, my hunter's mark had given away my location. I told you I'd find you. Now it's time you pay for your actions. The oversized snake shot powerful attacks down onto me. The two of us clashed in the sky in a battle unlike any other. The godly serpent rained his explosive projectiles of light onto me. I braced myself and managed to survive the attack thanks to my diamond armor. I retaliated with my demonic powers, sending a group of shocking lightning bolts at the serpent. I fought with everything I had, but I was still missing the power of two gems. I wasn't strong enough. Garo rushed to my side. Run while you can, Max. We'll hold them off. I didn't want to leave my friends, but I needed to look for a way to help. I reluctantly fled my base with Demo in search of anything that could protect our home. On days 80 through 83, I fled the destruction of my base with Demo to find anything that could help my army. As we traveled, I suddenly felt a strong magical presence that stopped me in my tracks. Who's there? A massive sea monster came out of the water and stood before me. What is a demon doing in the overworld? I explained my struggles up to this point and about the strife the godly serpent had put me through. That godly serpent has been dominating my people for a millennia. I'll help you create a seal for your base, but I need the power of the fifth curse gem to do so. Then I better find it quick. Be warned, this curse is unlike any of the others you've endured thus far. The wizard pointed me in the direction of the next gem, and as I was about to take my leave, we heard the sound of heavy footsteps. The godly serpent's pet had found me thanks to my hunter's mark. I'll hold them off! Go! Now! On days 84 through 86, I fled Godrius and flew through the sky in search of the fifth gem. I knew that the godly serpent's men must have been close, so I couldn't rest for even a moment. I flew until finally spotting a temple surrounded by skulls. Its eerie aura made me know for sure that this had to be the place. I landed at the top of the temple where the gem was waiting on a pedestal. There wasn't any time to waste. My men were fighting a losing war. Here goes nothing. I snatched the gem from the pedestal and the curse took effect. Like the wizard of warned, all of my power was sucked from my body. I was shrunken back down to a baby and my powers were sealed. 
Oh no! I hope this wears off soon! Just then, I heard a low growl from below. When I turned around, the horrible Godrius was waiting. You broke the wizard's defenses? I knew just like the beginning of my journey, he was far too powerful in my cursed state. Luckily, I wasn't alone this time. Sick him, Demo! On days 87 through 89, Demo transformed into his second evolution and engaged Godrius in combat. Demo jumped down and immediately ignited Godrius with his fire breath attack. The beast sliced with his powerful axe but Demo quickly jumped out of the way. Demo took some heavy hits, but he had grown strong and was able to withstand Godrius's massive sweeping attacks. The armored creature was flinging axes at lightning speed, but Demo kept up the fight. You got this, Demo! Use flamethrower! The battle was close and neither side was giving in until Godrius landed a devastating blow from his godly axe. Demo stumbled back and I thought he was done for. Demo! No! Suddenly, his body began to glow. Demo's horns grew longer and his legs stronger. He became much taller than before, and it was clear his strength had increased tenfold. Demo managed to evolve into his third powerful form. My companion continued to fight Godrius with his new strength. Demo's new flame attack packed a literal punch, knocking the beast backward with every hit. With one final blow, he took down the oversized cat. Demo, you did it! Just then, my curse wore off, and I was returned back even stronger than before. I now had five more hearts and the ability to shoot my venom in a poisonous blast. Demo transformed back into his smaller form, and I thanked him for everything. Oh. We don't have much time. Let's get back to my base and help my men. On days 90 through 92, Demo and I arrived back at the base to find the wizard was already there waiting. To our horror, the place had been cratered by the godly serpent. It didn't look like my defenses would hold much longer. And me the gem. I handed off the fifth gem to the wizard. He quickly got to work and set up a beacon that shined a protective light over my base. The godly serpent retreated, unable to overcome the beacon spell. You may have stopped me now, but next time I see you, I'm not holding back. You'll be good as dead, demon. Yeah, right. Like he can even come back to the base. It's protected. Don't celebrate too soon. This can only expel the godly serpent for 10 days. On day 100, he will return. He will finish what he started. Uh-oh. I have to get the sixth gem before then. The wizard returned the fifth gem to my possession, and I got to work patching up the craters left from battle. I only had 10 days to find the final gem, but I couldn't leave my base in shambles. Afterwards, I added even more to my demonic castle. It built the biggest tower yet. The serpent may have destroyed this place, but something even better had risen from the ashes. Later, I handed food to all of my men to heal up. Many fell to the might of the godly serpent, and I couldn't let their sacrifices be in vain. Just then, I spotted a map on the ground titled Lake of Light. The godly serpent must have dropped this. I better look into it. On days 93 through 95, I followed the map to discover an angelic lake with no gem in sight. I felt a deep feeling of dread come over me. Demons couldn't swim in purified water. Don't tell me it's in there. Demo. Demo, no. Demo tried to enter the water, but took loads of damage from one touch. You're a demon too, pal. Be careful. Just then, the ground began to shake and a crazy-eyed monster emerged from the lake before us. Why are you touching my lake? Demons are unwelcome here. I explained to the spirit my quest and how the godly serpent had wrongfully killed my people and my dad. I just wanted the final gem to protect my home. Luckily, it seemed like the spirit understood me. I've lost my father before too. Very well. Retrieve the sacred hourglass, and I will cast a protection spell to allow you to swim in purified water. I only had a few days remaining. I quickly set off in search of the hourglass. On days 96 through 98, I searched for the sacred hourglass that stood between me and the final cursed gem. As I looked, I spotted a ruin with a golden hourglass sitting at the center. There it is! I tried to approach the artifact, but once I reached the steps of the altar, I was teleported back to the entrance. What the? I tried to reach it by flying down from the sky above, but just like before, I was teleported back to the entrance. Something must be casting a protection spell. I looked around the perimeter of the ruin when I spotted a trail of gems on the ground. I followed behind it, unaware of what sort of monster was conjuring the powerful spell. When I reached the end of the trail, I found a monster speaking incantations to protect the hourglass. Hey bud, I need that artifact. No way! That belongs to the godly serpent! The monster suddenly attacked me. This is between you and me, bucko. 
He jumped onto me with his powerful fists and smashed me into the ground. Despite his size, he was strong, but I wasn't going to let him stop me now. I used my fire blast attack on him, but his skin was so tough, it was as strong as armor. I knew I was going to have to overwhelm him with my own brute force. I used my full arsenal to rain attacks down from above to weaken my opponent, then unleashed my acid blast for extra damage. No amount of armor would protect him from my venom. The poison slowly weakened the beast down as I continued fighting him more and more. It was a tough fight, but the serpent's goon succumbed to my power. The protection spell was broken. Time to get that hourglass. I rushed back to the altar and claimed the artifact successfully. With it in hand, I returned to the lake spirit and handed her what she desired. You held up your end of the bargain, so here's mine. She casted a spell which protected me from the purified water. I headed into the lake with only one day remaining from the godly serpent's final attack. On day 99, I swam in the purified lake until arriving at the altar of the sixth and final cursed gem. There was nobody around to guard it, which felt eerie, but the godly serpent was going to attack tomorrow. I didn't have any time to waste. I grabbed the gem and was immediately sucked into a nightmare realm. I woke up inside of a void with my father standing before me. I can't believe you haven't defeated the godly serpent yet. You're not worthy of being the demon overlord. What? My dad would never say that. This ends here. I honed in everything I had learned and struck into the imposter with a massive attack. The beast fell to my might. Just then, my real dad emerged from the darkness. Max, you saw through the curse of the sixth gem. Finish this battle and avenge our people. I'm so proud of you. I woke up at the surface of the lake with the cursed gem in my inventory. I now had five more hearts and even more strength than before. I need to head back home now. There's no need. I looked up, and to my horror, the beast had already found me. My time had run out. On day 100, I was confronted by the godly serpent. Surrender now, and I'll make your death quick. No, I won't submit to the likes of you. So be it. I'll enjoy every last second of this. The godly serpent began to rain his projectiles onto me from the sky above, but I wasn't alone. I had the power of the six gems. I tried to summon Demo, but the godly serpent struck me. This is between you and me, Cobra! The godly serpent dropped his explosive bombs of light at me that followed my every move. I tried to avoid them, but each one that managed to hit me blasted into my health for massive damage. He was even more powerful than before. I could tell now he was no longer holding back, but neither was I. I unleashed my demonic thunder onto him and summoned meteors from the sky above. They rained onto the serpent and I continued my onslaught. We clashed in the sky. Cobra versus serpent, demon versus god. It was anyone's game, but with the power of the cursed stones, I was no longer defenseless. I used all of my strength and managed to defeat the serpent once and for all. I did it! The six cursed gems disappeared from my inventory and transformed into a crown. It flew down onto my head, and I was a officially the demon overlord.